Good morning. This is the 100 indispensable vinyl records uh, chosen by a conductor. Some of you may know me as the publisher of Audiophilia, primarily an audiophile publication with a lot of music as well. But uh, the other part of my life is, is as a conductor and a flutist. Both of those jobs have been pretty quiet during the pandemic and even post-pandemic. So I've been focusing mostly on Audiophilia. As you can probably tell, we have lots and lots of reviews every second Friday and uh, some videos. And this video is for the 100 indispensable recordings chosen by a conductor rather than an audiophile. That doesn't mean that they're not audiophile recordings. I don't think I could listen to a non-audiophile recording as it was a very, very special performance. But these are very special performances that I think if you're very lucky, uh, you could, should have in your collection. Um, most of them are available on Discogs, of course, for a hefty price and shipping insanity. But if you're lucky, you can get them at a record store and um, trade, or uh, if you're very, very lucky, at a record show. But you should look out for these. And what of these are, are focused on, on great performances. <clears throat> there's uh, their classical records, their chamber music, there's solo music, there's um, concertos, and a lot of orchestral music. And uh, I'm primarily have been an orchestral player, and I love great orchestral playing. So as I go through these, some of you may go, oh no, not Von Karajan again. Well, I like great orchestral playing, and the great conductors know how to great, get great sounds and great performances um, and great ensemble from orchestras. So uh, these are the hundred that I recommend. Some of them are in box sets, they'll count as one. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the performance and the recording. And uh, by all means, if you get a chance to get these, I think you'll be very happy with them. So let's start off with a box set of some solo music. This is Janusz Starker, the famous Hungarian cellist, playing music by Bach, the Suites for Unaccompanied Cello. And it's a complete box. This is a reissue. Uh, you can go to elusivedisc.com or Acoustic Sounds. I don't have any financial arrangement with those people. And they usually have everything in stock, especially reissues, if it's available, I should say, as many of them are not. And this is uh, originally Mercury, and it's just an incredibly good set. Anyway, uh, Starker wasn't Russell Probich or Fournier or some of the other star cellos, but he was a fantastic musician. He was the principal cello of the NBC Symphony under Toscanini, and then became a very famous teacher at Indiana University. And uh, quite a stern man with very high standards. But his playing in this bar cassette is absolutely spectacular. Very highly recommended, as all of them will be. Another reissue box set. Uh, this is the Brahms Four Symphonies, played by Carrion with the Berlin Philharmonic. This is the 60s set that's been reissued, and it's just some of the greatest playing you'll ever hear. Uh, the recordings, you know, Carrion was a big fiddler. With the uh, with the um, in the in the recording room, and ruined a lot of his records. Uh, this is not being remastered. I don't think um, it's a limited vinyl edition uh, from sixty three sixty four. The lacquers were cut at the Emil Berliner Studios, and oh yeah, newly remastered from the original analog tapes, and they do sound a lot better. It's really fantastic. If you want Brahms played by you know a German orchestra with that German Brahms sound, especially the horns and the oboes. This is your one. <clears throat> it's a very special record. This is an original. This is the Leningrad Symphony on EMI, an original EMI. Uh, Shostakovich's Seventh Symphony. And this is with the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra. And you're saying, well, what the hell is a Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra? Well, Bournemouth is a small seaside town in England that provides a good professional orchestra and has done for a long time. And they, they serve the whole of the south of England. And they were very lucky in the 70s to get a conductor called Pavo Bergland, who many of you know. And uh, he did some fantastic Sibelius and Shostakovich recordings with this pretty well provincial orchestra. This recording is just spectacular, not just as for the recording, and which is one of the best audiophile recordings you'll ever hear, but just the playing and the interpretation. It's, it, Berglund got them to play out of their skin. Very interesting man, fine conductor, left-handed conductor, very rare, uh, but great performances. If you can find this one, this is worth seeking out even on Discogs and paying a little bit of a premium for. 
Again, it's original EMI. Everyone needs a great Beethoven set, <clears throat> and this is the one. This is Otto Klemperer, Mr. Grumpy, with his Philharmonic Orchestra. He did two sets, one in mono, which is outstanding, and one in stereo, this one, which is equally outstanding. Slow, craggy tempos, great playing, beautiful recording, EMI. I think they were done at Kingsway. Um, but that is, that's the set. It's pretty, it's pretty available. Um, there are other great sets of Beethoven's, but this is the one that I like. Auto claim for it on EMI. <clears throat> on to one of my favorite composers, Anton Bruckner. These are the whole box set of symphonies on Deutsche Grammophon, conducted by, I think, the greatest Bruckner conductor, Eugen Joachim, highly underrated. And this is with two orchestras, the Berlin Philharmonic and with the Bavarian Radio Symphony. Both, of course, amazing orchestras and both fantastic Bruckner orchestras. Joachim's uh, interpretations are pretty straightforward, but he gets just the most magical playing. And he doesn't do like a lot of conductors do now. Slow down at every climax and everyone's a signpost and it just gets boring and bogged down. This is really kind of lean, lithe, magnificently played and very well recorded Bruckner. And if you're going to, need to get a set of Bruckner symphonies and you all need one, of course you do, uh, this is your one. Okay, George Grandfam. This one's going to be a little more controversial. This is Carrie Anne's uh, The Ring of the Nibelungen by Wagner. It's a whole uh, uh, ring. <coughs> excuse me, the preliminary night, followed by the three operas, the three, excuse me, three music dramas. And uh, this is the Carrie Anne version, which for many years um, it was very highly recommended until Gralophon got a hold of them. And uh, I think Edward Greenfield said, uh, when, when Mima outsings Siegfried, you know it's time to go to a different set. Well, we all know what the, you know, many people consider the greatest set, which is the greatest cast and the great orchestra. That's Schulte on EMI, uh, the Vienna Philharmonic with the great ring, a great uh, cast, including John Vickers and uh, Birgit Nielsen and all the rest of them. And it's a fantastic set. And if you have that set, you don't need this one. The orchestra playing is great. But this one has some wonderful singing as well with a great mima. Heinz Zednick, he's the best mima. Um, Helga Brulioth, the uh, Swedish tenor, he's good. He's fine. He's not a, he doesn't bark like a lot of the guys nowadays because they can't sing it. Uh, it's, he's a good, he's a good, perfectly fine man, uh, Siegfried. But the orchestral playing, I mean, it's just to die for. No matter what, you know, famous section you want to listen to, the Ride of the Valkyries, or um, when Siegfried slays the dragon, or the descent into Nibelheim with the, with the, with the 12 anvils, uh, Siegfried's Rhine journey, Dawn and Siegfried's Rhine journey, uh, the immolation scene, Siegfried's uh, funeral music. I mean, it's all just so sublimely conducted and played by Carrion and the Berlin Philharmonic, which he conducts from memory, which is staggering. Um, so this is a, definitely a studio version. Again, he fiddles around a little bit, but it's it's just worth it. For it's got very good singing. I think Helga Danish. Let's see. There's, there's a, I think Helga, Helga Danish is yeah, she's on there, and Gundula uh, Janovitz. They're they're wonderful. Krista Ludwig, of course, she's amazing. Edda Moser, Anna Reynolds, Josephine Vizi, Dietrich Fischer Dayskal, Zoltan Kellerman is um, <clears throat> Bachner. But it's fantastic. I urge you, if you can find this, to get it. Uh, my wife, who is uh, small but mighty, lugged this set. I've got it empty because it's so heavy. It's got a massive book, book in it as well. She lugged it all the way from downtown Montreal in a snowstorm uh, for Christmas Day for my uh, Christmas present before we were married. That was over 40 years ago. So it's a very special record for me. But it's really like for orchestral playing, you, you just don't get any better. If you listen to, if you put on uh, Dawn and Siegfried's Ryan Journey, followed by the, the singing, uh, where she's saying goodbye to Siegfried, sending him on his way uh, before he does his Ryan Journey. Just listen to the singing and the playing. It does not get any better. So if you find that, you might get, because everybody wants the Schulte, which is, which is fine, it's a great recording. Um, you might find this, you know, discounted. That would be worth getting. So we'll continue with some individual releases. These are uh, 
uh, used LPs. These are not reissues. These are originals and um, primarily orchestral. And this will bring us up to 36 of the 100. This is a beautiful record I found for $5. Anytime you see an Argo, you can pretty well guarantee it's going to be an amazing recording, uh, originally from the Decker house. Uh, these are the Rossini uh, string sonatas. I'm not really a fan of uh, Rossini, except for his OHS, but he wrote these when he was like in his teens. A very, very talented man. Kind of quit composing at 36 when he got fat and very famous and very rich. Uh, but these are wonderful. And this is with the Academy of St. Martin's in the Fields. Notice it says directed by Neville Mariner. This is a very early recording when uh, Neville Mariner uh, was more, well, he was the principal second violin of the LSL, so he was a great player. But he was a very good businessman and uh, decided to get all the best players in London and create a very special name, Academy of St. Martin's in the Fields, which is a beautiful church in Trafalgar Square. Played quite a few concerts there. It's gorgeous. And uh, he made magic. Got the greatest players. And uh, they never got bad reviews. Ever. Hundreds of recordings. You're pretty well... Um, pretty well guaranteed a great record. Especially the early ones. This is one of my several Rite of Springs. The Sacre du Printemps. This is an original Decca. This is with the L.A. Feld and Mater. This is a very well-played recording and a, a really great record. Uh, I found this on Discogs. I wanted this record for my collection, and uh, it didn't disappoint. If you want a good Rider Spring, beautifully played. There you go. Another early Rider Spring. This is with the uh, Boston Symphony, and one of Michael Tilson Thomas's very earliest recordings. It's a wonderful Rite of Spring. It's fantastic playing here. The Boston Symphony can uh, play this in their sleep and from memory, but uh, boy, it was, it's fantastic. But you know what the great thing on this record is? It's the King of the Stars, which is a very uh, in, in, in a unique piece, a choral piece by Stravinsky. Um, I, what do they call it? I can't see right now. It's, it's a cantata, I think. But it starts off with these four large chords for male chorus and it's just incredible then it gets really creepy and beautifully orchestrated it's a very unique piece by Stravinsky not very well known because it's such a massive orchestra it's impossible to put on you need to pay a lot of people but this is a great recording I think it's pretty well definitive but the, the New England Conservatory of Music Men's Chorus is fantastic Deutsche gramophone, fine recording great playing great conducting This is a very interesting record. <clears throat> if you don't know Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 4, you don't really know Shostakovich. Most of you will know the story behind it. Uh, it was the symphony after um, uh, the Lady Macbeth of Metsk, his very violent, sexy opera that uh, Stalin sat over the trombones and drove him out of the theatre because it was so loud. And, of course, he was now on Stalin's hit list. And at the time he'd written Shostakovich's his Symphony Number no. 4, which is in the most incredibly outlandish piece. I mean, it's got everything in it, including the kitchen sink. And um, it's my favorite Shostakovich piece. It's just massive, unwieldy, and absolute genius. Of course, all his friends said to him, you can't play this. <laughs> Stalin's going to go nuts. So he wrote his fifth symphony, which is much more uh, formulaic and a fantastic symphony. What did he call it? Uh, a Soviet artist's a response to just criticism. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Shostakovich knew how to play the game. Anyway, um, this is the original recording. They smuggled out the the um, the score in microfilm. I love these spy classical stories. They're ridiculous. Um, anyway, the, the score got to the States, and Ormandy, a very underrated, brilliant conductor, with his fantastic Philadelphia orchestra, recorded it. This is the American recording premiere. Uh, I found this out uh, on um, on Discogs. I wanted it. This was a special record because my father had this when I was about five or six. And I'd look at the cover and go, I don't know why that is, but it's kind of ugh, scary. It's ugly. I don't know what it is. And he put the music on and I was like, I have no idea what this is. Anyway, <laughs> of course, as the years went by, I started to appreciate it more. And I never got to play it. I never got to conduct it. It's, it's, an, it's a massive orchestra. 
um, his, his other symphonies, even the great tenth is easier to put on than this one. This thing is massive, but it's a great recording. A lot of people have tried since and, and not got anywhere near this recording. This is, I think everybody was up for it and it's fantastic. So look for that. Even the, even the uh, CBS recording is pretty good, but that's, that's a must record for your collection. If you like orchestral music, loud and proud. This is the recording of Mahler das Lied von der Erde, his great song symphony. He wrote, um, along with his ninth symphony to kind of dodge the idea of the, the curse of the ninth symphony and him dying. Of course, unsadly, he never heard his ninth symphony or das Lied von der Erde or his sketches of his tenth symphony because he died of heart failure. Uh, before they could be formed, isn't it sad? Anyway, the great the song of the earth. Uh, I don't have uh, the recordings on vinyl that you should have, which is the Klemperer and Christa Ludwig and uh, Wunderlich recording on EMI, which is just remarkably good, or the uh, Patsak Ferrier uh, uh, Bruno Walter recording on Columbia. That's also very fine. This one is, I would say, number three. It's really good. It's with Bernard Heitink, the Consecutive Bell, on a Phillips record. I've had it since it came out in the 70s, and I love it. It's great. Uh, James King sang, sings very well, and of course, Janet Baker is uh, fantastic. This is really worth getting. Of course, it's Phillips imported from Europe. Phillips sound is way underrated. <clears throat> now, this is an, you can call it, consider this an audiophile record uh, on Lurita, another, I think it's a Decker House label, and it's like Argo, you're guaranteed a great recording. This is, they, they record a lot of English music that you don't know. This is with the Philharmonia, and can I wait, Ted Downs, fine conductor. This is George Lloyd's Symphony Number no. 5, a really, really fine piece, worth looking for if you, if you see it in a, in a bin somewhere. George Lloyd was a, a, a composer who um, was quite prevalent for the war. Then he, I, th I think he was in the Merchant Marine. I'm not sure. I don't think he was in the Royal Navy, but he suffered from shell shock very badly, had a bad nervous breakdown after the war, quit composing altogether, uh, worked as a mushroom farmer and a Carmation farmer, would you believe? Um, but then he got back into composing. And this is number, symphony number five, and it's a fantastic piece of music. If you get a chance to hear this, it's really good. As far as orchestral playing, it's exceptional. And uh, orchestration, very, very good. And it's very, very accessible. Lots of melodies that you'll like. Back to Von Karajan. This is his analog version of Shostakovich symphony number 10 the greatest symphony of the 20th century, just exceptional in every way. And this is with uh, Carrie Ann, of course, and his brother and Phil. He also re-recorded it in, um, in in digital. And it's very, very good. And some people consider it better. But this, I remember getting this uh, when I was a kid, and this record, and I just played it so often. This is the, the original one. And I loved it so much. The, it's a warm recording. And, uh, you know, I think Carrie put his hands to. Uh, he did a great job. And this is uh, this is this is exceptional. I don't think the playing has ever been better. This this there's a hundred recordings of Shostakovich ten, but this is my favorite. Or if you get the digital, it's also on LP. That's good too. His Kubelik with the Berlin Phil in some of his Dvorak recordings. This is Dvorak Symphony Number no. Eight, one of the most beautiful symphonies ever written. Absolutely beautiful. Four flawless movements. Not easy to play. Oh, the flute part in this is very, very difficult. But it's a great piece. And it's just the melodies are just gorgeous. And nobody was better with Dvorak than Kubelik. This is pretty well definitive. You all know this. This is the, an original living stereo of the Bartok music for strings, percussion, and celeste. The Hungarian sketches is fine too, but you come for the music for strings, percussion, celeste. It's just superbly played by the Chicago Symphony, and Rhino was friends with Bartok, and he knew the piece backwards, and wow, this is a knockout. And it's a great audio file recording. There's a lot of also Sparrow Sarathustras, including the great one with um, with uh, Rhino, the famous one from 1955, I think it is. I'll probably show that one a little bit later on the reissues. Uh, this is my favorite original. This is, um, see, the recording's good, it's very good. 
But Carl Berm was a very special Strauss conductor, and the Berlin Philharmonic playing on this is fantastic. Plus, I love the cover. Always have. Probably can get this for five bucks at a record show. Worth getting. This is another Symphony Number no. 8 by Dvorak. Originally, Symphony Number no. 4. Don't ask me about the numbering of the, uh, the Dvorak symphonies, but it's, it's actually Symphony Number no. 8 in G major, which actually starts in G minor, interestingly. And it's the LSO and Cortez on Decker. This one's in London, I think, yeah, which is very good. It's not as good as the Decker, but it's very good. But included with the G major symphony is a very underrated piece by Dvorak called Scherzo Capriccioso, which is just the most amazing piece. It's about 10 minutes, and it's just a beautifully uh, orchestrated piece of music full of beautiful, uh, you know, bohemian melodies. It's worth looking for this record. Plus the... the, the um, the Cortez uh, eighth is only beaten by the um, Kuzlik. <clears throat> Here's a fantastic planets that you should all have. This is uh, uh, the uh, London, I think. It's, is this the London? Yeah, this is the London version. It's good. The deck is even better if you can find it, but it's unobtainium. This is Carrion conducting the planets in the 60s with the Vienna Philharmonic. It is so much better than his later version. You're going to hear that a lot. On a lot of uh, a lot of YouTube channels, that the later versions he did were not good. Were not as good. This is the early the Vienna Phil. I didn't know it that well. They play out of their skins. Carrion, you know, uh, he wasn't a great you know conductor of English music, but this is just superb. Great playing and a wonderful recording, even on London. This is one of those very special Academy of Some Arts in the Fields LPs. Also on Argo, the home, home label. This is full of American music. Um, now, of course, everyone's going to buy it. I love that painting, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> who's that painting by? I think it's uh, Sergeant, John Singer Sergeant. Anyway, back to the music, um, American music. The Adagio of Strings is wonderful. The Eye of Symphony Number no. 3 is absolutely beautifully played. Very uh, melodic. Quiet City, you're not going to hear a better recording with Michael Laird on trumpet and Celia Nicklin on Corongle. Superb. The, the recording is beautiful. It's recorded at St. John Smith Square, where I've played a lot in London, and it's a gorgeous hall. Great for recording. But audio files, here's a little trick for you. If you hit this record, <clears throat> listen carefully. If you have a really good turntable and a good pickup and a good cartridge with great bass response in your speakers, you can hear ever so slight rumbling once in a while. And that is, because uh, they recorded it early in the morning, uh, they call them, what do they call them in England? Uh, something goods van, a lorry. Um, stopped at the corner <clears throat> near Westminster where this hall is. And you'll hear them revving their engines as they get to go and it's a very low rumble. It's, it's not as clear as uh, the Kingsway tube rumble, but it's very good. And it's, boy, can you hear it? And it's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, interfere with the music, but it's, it's interesting as an audio file. Uh, Herman Fugin tune number 10 by Crowell, a great piece. And Paul Creston, self-taught, fine composer, a rumor, short little schizo-like piece, but this orchestra is playing to die for. That's a great record, see if you get that. This is one of their Academy's most famous records. This is <clears throat> Vaughan Williams. I've got another one that coming up, coming up in a bit that actually We'll top this one, but if you want to get all the famous uh, Vaughan Williams pieces, uh, Fantasia on the theme of Thomas Tallis, his greatest work is just beautiful. And uh, the playing is sublime. And so is the recording. This is a fantastic Tchaikovsky's fourth. Vienna Philharmonic with Abado. Abado at his very best, the Vienna Philharmonic at their very best. Playing the hell out of Tchaikovsky fourth. Now, I know the uh, the Leningrad with Mavrinsky on Deutsche Grammophon recorded in Wembley Town Hall. Can you believe it? When they're on tour, is is incredible and probably the best. Uh, the LPs are okay. This LP is great. The playing is even more refined. The Vienna Philharmonic on this record is just outstanding. That's worth getting. <clears throat> this is an interesting one for you. Uh, Richard Strauss Alpine Symphony. Uh, Conducted by their greatest, his greatest conductor, Rudolf Kemper, ex-principal oboe of the, I think it was the Dresden Staatskapelle, 
which is many people consider the greatest Strauss orchestra. And Kemper did conduct this with the, um, the Dresden. It's fantastic. This is an early RCA dining groove, the dreaded dining groove, but it doesn't detract from it too much. This is when he conducted the Royal Phil in the early, I think it was the late 60s, early 70s. And he unfortunately died during his uh, music directorship. But he got some special sounds out of the Royal Phil. And this is a spectacular recording. The Royal Phil are kind of like the, uh, the red-headed stepchild of London orchestras, along with the BBC Symphony. So it was the LSO, LPO, Philharmonia, then the other two. But this Royal Philharmonic was not um, Beecham's orchestra. But it was very fine and some great playing. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a very good performance. <clears throat> Another one, this is from the, uh, the um, different uh, than London. This is the City of Birmingham Symphony and the Provinces. So fun music by Massonet. This is Le Cid. Uh, the music is a lot of fun, but the playing is very fine. But the recording, EMI, Intermediate, this is the ancient green stage, but it's still wonderful. That's a great record for audiophiles and for, for people who just want some good music. It's recorded in Birmingham Town Hall before they've got went to their new concert hall, and it's a big barn, but they manage it. But boy, it's, it's a fantastic sounding record. <clears throat> this one gets a little bit of a, a discussion. Uh, a lot of people, again, you know, think of Sibelius, they like, uh, you know, the new ones. Uh, the modern ones. The, the, this is my favorite Sibelius Five. But Sibelius is the greatest symphony, conducted by Carrion with the Berlin Phil on Deutsche Grandphone. A good recording, very good. The playing is just out of this world. The piece is almost impossible to make sound right because it's it, there's no real melody in it. It just goes from section to section. So it takes a great conductor to make it sound cohesive, which Carrion does. But the playing. Listen to the opening, with the opening of the horn, and then as the it builds up with the little florid passage between the, the clarinets and the oboes and then ends with the flutes on a major second, high A flat, B flat, and you listen to the flute playing and all the other playing, and you'll realize that there's no one that can even come close to this recording. It's fantastic. Good tapiolo as well, but you're going to buy it for the Sibelius Five. It's a pretty rare record if you can find it. It's got Alexander Gurr, better known as Sandy Gurr, still a professor at Cambridge. His little symphony, very, very good. Nice piece, got it by Norman Delmar, ex-French horn player with the LSO, but I was, I buy it for this. This is the uh, Michael Tippett Concerto for Orchestra, which is just the most spectacular piece. Played by the LSO, Out of Their Skin by Colin Davis. Uh, the British Council gave him some money to record this, get his modern music, but it's, it's very tuneful and very uh, accessible. But that is a fantastic piece of music by Michael Tippett. I think this is his best piece. If you ever get a chance to hear this piece, it's amazing. And the LSO, I think it's in the early 70s. It was just spectacular. Another LSO with an earlier music director. This is Previn on an RC. Unfortunately, it's Danny Groove, but it's not too bad. Uh, Shostakovich 5, which uh, many people consider among the best. It's very musical, beautifully played, and quite well recorded. But if you need a Shostakovich 5 on, on, on vinyl, that's a good one. Now this is a pretty well definitive recording. Most people know this. Uh, this is also Previn with the LSO, also on Dana Groove, unfortunately. Uh, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, but of course, uh, the Walton, Sir William Walton Symphony Number no. 1, which is a spectacular piece of music. I mean, among the greatest symphonies of the 20th century. And Previn plays the living hell out of it with the LSO. It's just, he ruined it because no one's even come close to this recording. So if you, if you, if you got one of Walton one, one it's some really great orchestral music, again, very accessible, very melodious, fantastic uh, uh, construction with fugues and, oh, it's just an, ama an amazing piece of music with that. A fantastic opening movement, by the way. Great form. And Previn builds it like no other. That's the recording. If you get other recordings there, they're, they're very good, but they pale compared to that. <clears throat> this is pretty interesting, considering what's going on right now. As the BBC acts, the BBC Singers, a professional group, they also had the BBC Northern Singers, which got acts in 1994, I think it was. Uh, this is um, just shows you, if you ever get a chance to hear this recording, it's quite available. 
It's a, it's a Hyperion record. It's uh, choral music by Sir Arnold Bax, and I wouldn't usually buy this. I, I think I just picked it up because I thought, oh, BBC Northern Singers, never heard them. And this is an absolutely beautiful record um, with some glorious singing and beautiful music. If you get a chance to get this record, it's pretty available. BBC Northern Singers on, um, on Hyperion. Of a Rose, I Sing. And BBC, don't axe the BBC singers. Smarten up. You're public, you're publicly funded. This is a, a another London. Of course, if you can get it on deck, it's even better. But the London's certainly fine. This is another Zubin made a LA classic with the uh, Richard Strauss Symphony Domestica. There's the family. There they are. His wife was a great singer. But this is a fantastic orchestral piece, very underrated, uh, beautifully orchestrated, lots of beautiful melodies. And if you need a Symphonia Domestica, this is one. This is It's beautifully played. You won't find it better. The LA fell under made it, you know, I think they made about 35, rec 35 recordings. It's just incredible. Very, very consistent. <clears throat> Some of you might find this, oh, uh, look what it's got. It's got the digital name. Oh my goodness. Actually, it's very good. <laughs> A lot of nonsense between the digital and analog stuff, but this is very, very good. It's a, not fairly recent. It was at the very beginning of Telarc, and Fred Fennell, the, the 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 king of all band music, decided he wanted to get the best band, and uh, you know bands, or you know what they can sound like. So he got the Cleveland Symphony, Cleveland Orchestra, Winds, Woodwinds and Brass, Cleveland Cleveland Symphonic Winds. This is the best band record you'll ever hear. It's just exceptional playing the most difficult most beautiful band piece ever written Lincolnshire Posey by Granger and other pieces as well but this is fantastic Lincolnshire Posey there's been a lot of good recordings of the you know of, of it lately on on CD and played very well usually by really top university bands University of Michigan uh, University of North Texas etc but this is I mean this is in a different league it's just exceptional and if you can find that record, I had to buy it on Discord because I wanted it. Okay, makes it very special. It was an imported pressing. There you go. But if you want to have a band record, that's the one to get. Another record of Michael Tippett's, Sir Michael Tippett's music. This is another one on Argo. This is again with his champion, the LSO and Colin Davis. This is the second symphony. This is a fantastic piece of music. You know, sometimes, you know, I put it on and then my wife goes, oh, is that Tippett? She doesn't like him. I think he's a genius. And uh, not everything he wrote, but the the, the, um, the earlier Concerto for Orchestra, the second symphony is spectacular, played by uh, the LSO. And it also has on, I don't think it has it on the front, it also has his uh, horn quartet, quartet for four French horns, played by the LSO horn section, leading led by Barry Tuckwell. That is spectacular. I mean, the, first of all, the piece is impossible, and they, have the, they play the hell out of it. But that's a great record, and it's pretty available. <clears throat> this is the Vaughan Williams record that kind of tops the, uh, the um, Academy of Summers in the Fields. This is the English. Uh, this is Barbara Raleigh conducting the, the uh, what is it? The Sinfonia of London, which is a pickup orchestra. If you know... Uh, Jim Norris, who writes for us in um, at Audiophilia, brilliant violist and singer. That's his teacher right there. Um, who told us all about them recording this. And I think it wasn't Kingsway. It was a different hall, Temple Church, I think. But Barb Wally was fantastic for um, string music. And this is, and uh, Vaughan Williams, I should say. And this is, well, it's the best. It's an EMI. It's a definitive recording. The quality is amazing. And uh, the playing is out of this world. I think every pickup guy, I know the leader is Charles Taylor, this fella. I've worked with him. He was the concert master, the leader of the Royal Opera House Orchestra in those days. So they had, you know, he did, it was a kind of an early academy sim on the fields. All the best players in London sitting in one uh, orchestra. That's, that's a must. This one is a wonderful original um, living stereo. Uh, underrated composer, underrated conductor. Uh, the orchestra of the London Symphony plays the heck out of this, the Bard in Symphony Number no. 2. It's also got a very good Capriccio Espanol by Ripsy Corsica. Not the best one, but it's very, very good. 
but the symphony number no. two is fantastic and if you don't know this piece it's it's very beautiful very melodious and the orchestra plays the hell out of it and of course it's one of the great kingsway um, lscs that's very well well worth getting and quite available Another very early Tilson Thomas, uh, very beautifully played by the Boston Symphony. A very young Michael Tilson Thomas on Deutsche gramophone. Includes a beautiful La Prévédie d'un Fon, played by the great Dorio Anthony Dwyer on flute. And uh, Hommage, it's a knockout uh, performance. Tilson Thomas really made some fantastic records in his early days. Get well soon, maestro. This is a very special record, another Deutsche Grammophon, another Boston Symphony. This is with uh, the principal guest conductor, Claudio Abado, in his very young days. This Claudio won quite a few awards. This is a wonderful record, uh, very idiomatic. A beautiful Daphne and Chloe, again with Doyo Anthony Dwyer playing the flute part. Charles Kavalowski on French horn playing the Pavan. And the orchestra in the Debussy is uh, just knockout as you'd expect from this, this group, Boston Symphony and uh, Abado. A wonderful recording. This is an interesting one, uh, with kudos to my friend and colleague, Martin Appel, uh, who played this record with me. I had no idea, I didn't, I didn't know the, uh, the orchestra. This is the Sud, Sud Sudwestfunk Orchestra Baden-Baden. It's a spa town in, in Germany. <clears throat> Tibor Joke, I think he's Hungarian, never heard of him. Uh, but this is a knockout uh, recording and playing. Uh, the orchestra plays out of its uh, skin, its vox, uh, and the music is very good. Von Suppe uh, was a, um, a, a bandmaster in the German army, or Prussian army, I would guess, in those days. And he wrote some really beautiful overtures. This is Poet and Peasant. Morning, noon, night in Vienna, light cavalry. Uh, I won't sing it like those other guys do because my voice is awful, but you know the melody as soon as you hear it. And Boccaccio. Uh, Boccaccio. Uh, I played most of these, collection most of these. They're, they're lovely, light music. They're not easy to play, but they're very effective. And this is a wonderful sounding recording uh, from Vox, no less. And this is a lovely LSC. Uh, the next records I'm going to be doing are reissues, and this has a very good reissue, but this is where the original is better. I played them back to back many times, and the original, for some reason, you know, the analog uh, productions, which is uh, usually spectacular, that's a little overcooked in my in my estimation. The original here is spectacular with uh, the Chicago Symphony playing Strauss waltzes, imitating a perfect Vienna Philharmonic. Uh, but flawless intonation, flawless t uh, t technique, ensemble, and a beautiful recording from Chicago Symphony Hall. That's a that's a lovely, lovely record, and the music is so underrated. It really is. Now we're going to head on to our reissues. Uh, I'm not sure some of the sources that most of the living stereos are analog. Productions and of course most of you know those and there's very very fine productions a lot of analog original analog tapes and um, Without getting into all that uh, controversy, but they're wonderful sounding recordings and pretty well definitive if analog productions uh, Reissues them. They're pretty well definitive recordings of the music. This is uh, La Mer by uh, Debussy on site a and Ports of Call eh. Bad film music by Hubert, not a big fan of Hubert, but the La Mer is with the Boston Symphony and uh, Charles Munch. And uh, he imported a lot of French players into that orchestra in those days. It sounds very idiom idiomatic. The playing is spectacular. Munch was a bit of a speed merchant with his, you know, five foot long baton, but um, uh, he really gets, you know, he's a fantastic musician. He really gets great playing and a, a lovely interpretation. The playing is spectacular. This is an interesting one. Absolute must for your collection. Uh, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra under their founder, Sir Thomas Beecham. This is when the Royal Philharmonic was at its very best. And Beecham uh, usually 
play the you know the small short lollipops and composers like Delius and Berlioz, shorter pieces by Berlioz very well. But this is very large scale Heldenleben, A Hero's Life by Strauss, uh, with the uh, young Canadian Toronto Torontonian leader Stephen Starrick playing the violin. It's just wonderful. It's a great recording, and uh, very unlike you know Beecham. It's got it's more like Carrion but with a great recording. This is from HQ, HQ Supercuts. I still got, I beg your pardon, Q Records Supercuts. Don't know much about them, but it's a very, very nice reissue. And uh, if you want a nine home label that's beautifully played and beautifully interpreted, there's your one. Well, you all know this one. 1955, Reiner, Alsace Rex Orthestra. Sounds like it was recorded yesterday. Splendid performance. Uh, recording to die for in Chicago Symphony Hall. That's Mr. Happy. As the flutist uh, Julius Baker, who was in the orchestra for one year, said uh, Fritz Reiner was flawless. He you know, knew the score better than anybody else, but just if you ever go to, on Google, I beg your pardon, YouTube, and Google him and see him conducting the Chicago Symphony. All he had to give you was one look. Trust me, he got your attention very quickly. But anyway, you're going to see a lot of the um, a lot of uh, Reiner recordings in in my collection that I think are definitive and number one. This is a superb recording. You should all have that. You probably had that already. There you go. The famous LSC 1806. A Decca reissue. I'm not sure where it's from. It could be Testament. It could be uh, um, Analog Productions. I'm not sure where. But it's available. <clears throat> it's the Mozart 40 and 41. Superb recording uh, from Kingsway. So, yeah. Guys, um, and with Giolini, Thinking Man's Musician. The Philharmonia and its new Philharmonia guys. In the re middle of the recording of um, Das Lied von der Erde with Klemperer. Walter Legg, who owned the orchestra, Elizabeth Schwarzkopf's husband, came in and said, OK, we're all done. Everybody out, <laughs> we're disbanding. So the orchestra kind of got together and asked um, uh, Dr. Klemperer, could you stay on? And we'll call it the New Philharmonia. So they were the New Philharmonia for a little while. The rights uh, went to a, a Philadelphia lawyer um, who I actually saw conduct the orchestra in London in 77. Uh, I think that was part of the deal. Uh, and then he gave the naming rights back. So that they, of course, then became the famous Philharmonic Orchestra again. That's a that's a wonderful recording of Mozart, 40 and 41. You need that uh, you need that to compilation. And uh, there's no better playing than this one. Giulini is such a great musician. These are uh, some of the Decker uh, reissues uh, from um, uh, the L'Orchestre de la Suisse Romande, which is in Geneva. Hence the French name. <clears throat> and Ernst Ansemey, uh, I think he's underrated because he does so many things so well, but a very fine conductor. Second rate orchestra has them usually playing out of their skins and it's very special. This is Petrushka, one of my all time favorite pieces. Um, I love it to death. And this is a very good performance of it. But the recording, never had a better recording. So if you want to get a good Petrushka, well played. Uh, but the recording is to die for. You all know this one as well. Uh, another Mr. Grumpy conductor, Arthur Fiedler, if you ever saw the 60 Minutes special with him. It's hilarious. Um, <clears throat> Gaiety Parisienne by Offenbach. Lots of lovely music. This is a very early stereo one. I think it's even earlier than the um, the uh, famous Alsace Brooks Arthur Street. This is uh, 1817. But it's, um, again, superbly played. It's really, it's the Boston Symphony, not really the Boston Pops. I got this one for like five bucks. Uh, a living stereo. I don't think the, um, the uh, compilation is very popular, but it's Schumann Carnival, the piano piece, that's arranged for the for a ballet for the Royal Opera House, Common Garden, and the SE Orchestra that's playing it. But the, uh, the music is beautiful. Even the Maybeer, Les Patineurs, I think it's another arrangement for, for, for ballet. 
but the the music is gorgeous and the playing is very good and the recording is is fantastic it's the uh, 2450 and look out for that that's a, that's a sleeper now probably if not my favorite record certainly i think the best recording i have this is reference recordings uh, dr dr keith uh, did it in um I think it's what for Town Hall with the London Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by the man himself, Sir Malcolm Arnold, and doing a repertoire, not really, you know, not very famous repertoire of Malcolm Arnold, but wonderful. The Smoke, a Sussex Overture, the Fairfield, Commonwealth, Christmas Overture. But, the, oh, it's got Becker's Dan The Dandy Pratt, which I've actually played. It's, um, it's not so much the music, which is actually very, very good. It's the recording and the performance. Now, I know what happens in London. They get there, the light goes on, and they even record the re rehearsal just in case they get a good take because time is money in London. The orchestras are very expensive. Unfortunately, reference uh, lately have to go to other orchestras, not quite as strong as London Philharmonic. This is a pretty rare record. Um, and the fact that the London Philharmonic are on it. But it's just the dynamic range on this record is scary and even though I've got pretty good equipment here I'm very very careful with the volume on this album I think it's the uh, the smoke that gets insane but no distortion just volume and the most beautiful playing by the London Philharmonic Malcolm Arnold was a very interesting character a very sad life he was a uh, kind of a manic depressive and, and a severe alcoholic and it really hobbled his life um, he actually, uh, my father did a concert with him in, in the uh, 50s, and uh, he liked jazz a lot, Malcolm Arnold, and he was going to write some music for my dad in his vocal quartet, jazz vocal quartet, when there were students at the Royal Military School of Music in Ella Hall in London. And my father said he was a lovely man, but of course, drinking all the time, what a sad life, but great music. If you can find that, the CD is really good, but nothing like the LP. <clears throat> This is another, it's quite rare, another top choice. This is, uh, magic happened on this day. I think again, it's Kingsway. This is the Chesky reissue. The Chesky, there it is, finally get it. Chesky of the Sibelius Second Symphony, absolutely beautiful. Played by the Royal Philharmonic, you know, and it's in a, in a, in a very good version of the Royal Philharmonic, but conducted by Sir John Barbarali. And he does things in this symphony and Actually, when I've studied the score, I played it a couple of times, never conducted it, but I studied the score when I got this recording and searched it out on vinyl, because it's available on CD, but vinyl's harder to get. But he does some things that are right there in the score, and nobody else does them, but Barbara Raleigh gets it. That's, if you can find it, it's unobtaining. That's really worth seeking out, a fantastic record. An overused word in my vocabulary, fantastic, but it is. It's a fantastic record. Here's another one from Chesky. This is D Daphne St. Chloe. Chesky reissue of the Boston Symphony with Charles Munch during the whole ballet, entire ballet. And uh, it's magnificent. This is always in a <clears throat> competition with uh, the LSO's Monteur Decca version, which is also superb. I, some days I think the Boston version is better. Some days I think the other. So they're both wonderful. Either one is fine. But this one's if you can get it, get it. Most of you will have heard of this record. This is what many people consider the greatest recording of not just Beethoven's Symphony Number no. Five, which it is, uh, no matter what you hear on YouTube. <laughs> But many people consider it's the greatest recording of anything ever recorded. It is that good. I, it's just magic. Carlos Kleiber has ways of doing things that nobody else, even my favorites like Carrie Ann and Shalini and that, can't do. Carlos, if you if you watch him on YouTube, I mean, his hands and his body, what he does as a conductor, from a conducting point of view, is just staggering. And it's all natural. You can't learn it. I mean, his father, Eric Kleiber, was a famous conductor too. Very good. Carlos was a very unique individual. And there's a couple of videos, long sh movies about him on YouTube you should watch. Uh, kind of a lost individual and only showed up when, as he said, there were no stakes in the freezer. 
and his uh, fee was one time his fee was a fully loaded Audi. <laughs> He's an odd guy, um, and lived a kind of a frugal life uh, outside Munich. But anyway. This recording is spectacular. Actually, I should beg your pardon. The recording is very good. It's Deutsche Grand Farm. This is a reissue, of course, um, but the performance is second to none. The Vienna Philharmonic is just spectacular in this. And it's just perfect Beethoven. And there's the man himself. <clears throat> Genius conductor. This is a very good recording uh, of Tottenberg Klagung, Death and Transfiguration. And then also a very good Four Last Songs with Gunduli Janowitz, who's a wonderful singer. The carry out at his very best. The Tottenberg Clary, the playing is second to none. The Bill and Fallen, it, 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 Philharmonic, it's so rich, it's so beautiful. Uh, that great word, refulgent, uh, is with this record. And Carry Anne just, you know, just, he was at the height of his powers there and had the orchestra playing the way he wanted, and it's spectacular. So if you want a death, death and transfiguration, that's a superb one. Anything by Carlos Kleiber, especially reissued, I purchased. This is a uh, Unfinished Symphony by Schubert, and also number three. It's exquisite playing by the Vienna Phil. And it's a lovely production. You all need an, an Unfinished. There aren't many better than this one with Kleiber and the Vienna Phil. Many people know this recording. It's been reissued in every format uh, many, many times. This is the, the famous Decker three cornered hat with Anselme and uh, Teresa Berganza and the orchestra de la Swiss Roman. And this is one I think is, is the Swiss Roman's best played record. It's just superb playing. And the recording, just from the opening in Geneva's uh, Victoria Hall, which is a beautiful hall. Everything is perfect about this record. The music is superb, Defia, three cornered hat. Um, the playing and the recording. And of course, Teresa Berganza is lovely too. She's a great singer. <clears throat> this is the uh, the cousin to the, the Beethoven's Fifth. Uh, this is also superb, but it's not, I wouldn't consider it the very best recording of the Beethoven's Seven. It's very well played, beautifully played, and the recording is good. Uh, Kleiber's interpretation is pretty hard driven, but the playing is, you know, the, the Vienna Falk can play it in their sleep. Uh, and it's very, very good. If you if you need a single Beethoven seven, you can't go wrong with this one. I prefer the uh, the seven. It's slower, craggier with Klemperer in that box that I showed you earlier. But that's a good one. You can get it, no problem. Most people know this one. This is a great audio file recording. The music to A Midsummer's Night Dream, which I've both played and conducted. And the flute part in this is uh, scary, scary, scary. In the scherzo, when you hear the flute part at the end of the scherzo, it seems so kind of nondescript just flooding away, but it's terribly difficult. Um, and this is on uh, Decca, SXL 2060, a very famous record. This is the reissue. And with Peter Marg, I'm not sure what that was Swiss, with the LSO, the soloist, exquisite music by Mendelssohn. He wrote the overture when he was 17, if you can believe it. Incredible music, what a musician. And then the later music uh, for the play. There it is, music to a Midsummer Night Dream. By Mendelssohn. <clears throat> this is the famous Carrie-Anne Debussy Ravel record. The recording, he really fiddled a lot with this one, and it's 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 a bit murky, but it's still very good. But you get it for the playing, which is second to none. I mean, Karl Hanzola playing Prelude à la Médie d'une Fond, the flute party is an exquisite player. Same with Daphnis and La Mer. This, I think, the reason um, carrie -Anne did it is because they have two full-time solo flutist, but Karl Heinz Oller was a very special player with a very special sound. And that's, the playing on this is second time. The recording, uh, you, you'll be fine with it. It's okay. It's not the, uh, it's not the, uh, the, the one I showed you earlier on um, RCA with Munch and the Boston Symphony, but it's, it's very good. The playing is equally or better. Here's that Daphnis I was telling you about with the Monteur and the LSO on Decker. This is X, SXL 2164. This is, again, the reissue. Uh, you can get this at most, yeah, elusive disc or acoustic sounds. Again, no financial uh, recompense from those guys, but they're very fine stores with a lot of good uh, product. <clears throat> Monteur came late to the LSO, and this was a pretty magical record. Again, you may prefer the Boston. 
some days I prefer the Boston with with, with Munch. Some days I prefer the uh, the uh, Monteux with the LSL. Can't go wrong with either. Everyone needs this. This is the Royal Ballet Gala performances. One of the greatest recordings of all time. This is the reissue. RCA Victor Living Stereo. Uh, there we go. And it's the Soria series. And this is from Acoustic Sounds. And again, it's answer me, but this time with the Royal Opera House Orchestra, who sound fantastic. Lots of beautiful music, including the Nutcracker, and a good one. Fantastic Swan Lake, Giselle, Propelia, pretty fantastic. And there's that Carnival. Lots of great Symphony Fantastics about. This one is with Atuolfo Argenta, with the Paris Conservatoire Orchestra, which he has playing beautifully. A great conductor, died in an early death. He was asphyxiated with um, carbon monoxide poisoning, unfortunately. But I think you better Google the story to find out the real story, what happened. <laughs> I won't uh, go into it here, but it's, uh, it's quite an interesting story. It's, it's sad, but a very fine conductor and uh, died way too young. A 12 foot Argenta. But that's a wonderful, simply fantastic. Lots of color, very well played, very well recorded. And here's the power of the orchestra, uh, conducted by uh, Le René Leibowitz, a fine conductor. Uh, I think he was French, not Swiss, French, uh, specialized in modern music. And this was uh, a kind of a specialty recording that turned out very, very well. Royal Philharmonic playing very, very well. Uh, doing uh, some Mazorsky um, pictures. It's a good pictures. Is it as good as the one coming up that I'm going to show you? No, but it's very, very good. Almost. And a nine on Bear Mountain that's almost unrecognizable because um, Ripsy Korsakov, of course, took it and changed it a lot from, from the original Mazorsky and made it into a pretty good concert piece. The original is 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 odd, but it's it's still Mazorsky, great music. But Leibowitz does things with it that just make it into kind of, it's nonsense. I can't even listen to it. Just extra instruments and it's just a disaster. But Pictures and Exhibition is very good. But the orchestra, the recording is superb. If you need a Pictures and Exhibition, you'll be happy with this one. Uh, but there's one coming up that I think is even better. And I bet you many of you know what that is. This is another famous Living Stereo, which is Brew, played by the New Symphony Orchestra of London, which is basically the LSO. And Sandy Gibson, Alexander Gibson, a very underrated Scottish conductor, LSE225. And it has um, lots of uh, interesting uh, repertoire on it. It's it's a very fine recording, but if you need the recording specifically, let's see what they are. I'll have to take this out. Okay, it's got some pretty, you know, interesting program. Can you see that? No, so I'll just read it to you. So it's got Tam O'Shanter by Arnold, which is a great piece. I've played it lots of times. A little bit of uh, uh, Pictures, Nomus, and Nan on Bear Mountain, which is, I think, is the Richard Korsakoff version. Dance Macabre, uh, Humperdinck, which is right from Hassel and Gretel, and Mephisto Waltz. It's very, very good, very well played, and beautifully recorded. A classic Iberia by Debussy, Ryan and Chicago Symphony. Also, it's got Alvarado del Gracioso. And Vols Nobla e Sentimental, just a superb um, compilation of the best of Debussy and Ravel, played exquisitely by the Chicago Symphony in the very, very best sound you'll ever hear, LSC 2222. This is another interesting record from Athena, a reissue. Uh, this is the Rachmaninoff Symphonic Dances, as vocalese, which is just a filler. The Symphonic Dance is a wonderful piece. Uh, I've actually never played them, but because uh, they're very prevalent. This is with the Dallas Symphony Orchestra under Donald Johannes, who my flute teacher's husband played under in the Tulsa Philharmonic Concert, was the most boring conductor of all time. Anyway, uh, this is not boring. This is actually very good. Recorded by the Dallas Symphony, sounding very good, even in those days. I think it was recorded in the 60s. In a, in a Dallas high school auditorium. <laughs> But it sounds wonderful. It's kind of mic'd closely, but the playing is very good, but it's very effective. And of course, the piece is superb. You need that one. Everyone wants to go for the reference recording with IG OA and the, uh, I think it's the, uh, what orchestra is it? Minnesota. I think it's Minnesota. And it, well, on reference recordings. And it's very, very good. But this is superb. Now, another Kleiber. This is uh, about the same as this Beethoven 7th, about the same quality. Highly recommendable. 
the lovely recording. Uh, the playing is very fine. And if you need a Brahms 4, and of course you do, this is the one to get. It's very, very well played. There are other beautiful fourth symphonies that I'm sure you all have in your collection. But on vinyl, this is a reissue, and it's very good. The pressing is lovely. The recording is good. Here's a record from our friends. I think it's at Lynn. This is a 45 RPM supercut with Robin Ticchiati, who's a very talented young conductor in England. I think he's Scottish. It's for the Scottish Chamber Orchestra. Only one piece, Symphony Number no. 101 in, in uh, D major by Haydn. Wonderful piece, wonderful recording, 45. And uh, just make sure you switch it to 45, otherwise you're going to get some funny sounding Haydn. There's not that many great audiophile and uh, performing uh, Bruckner's about. Uh, this gentleman, Carl Sherrick with the Vienna Philharmonic doing Bruckner Symphony No. 9. Uh, I think this is an EMI, I think this is a testament reissue. Uh, played spectacularly by the Vienna Phil. Carl Sherrick, a very underrated conductor, did some good Beethoven, but his Bruckner 8 and Bruckner 9 are pretty well definitively, I think, are the best. This is a beautiful sounding recording. The orchestra is on full, on full stretch. It's just lovely. Another famous record for your collection you need, Espana. Uh, another Decca. This is with the LSO and Argenta again, a 12 for Argenta. Let's see what they're playing on it. It's, it's another one of those compilation records. Yeah, it's got uh, Capriccio Espanol, uh, some Andalusa, and it's got Espana. And the Spanish dances by Moskowski. They're good. The main thing is you're going to buy it for Capriccio Espanol and Espana, both of which receive superb performances. Nice cover, famous cover. There you go. This is an interesting one. Everest. I'm not a big fan of a lot of the Everest ones. I think they're kind of overblown, but this is very good. This is the Prokofiev of Symphony Number no. 5. You all need one of those. Most of it, and a lot of you will have the, the Carrion, which is very famous and very good. Not, not as well recorded as this. This is Sir Malcolm Sargent conducting the LSO in an absolutely spectacular performance and recording of Prokofiev 5. Uh, Jim Norris is going to do a Streaming the Classics uh, article on Sir Malcolm Sargent coming up in a week or two, uh, no, sorry, a month or two for Audiophilia. An interesting character. Uh, a lot of first-hand knowledge about this man. Uh, highly unpleasant and uh, mean-spirited. They used to call him Flash Harry because he was always so perfectly immaculately dressed. But my flute teacher, when I went to England for the first time, just for a couple months before I started doing the auditioning, in 1977, early 77, uh, was the second flute of the BBC Symphony under Sargent. And he would say that Sargent would come in in a very bad mood and start as and start rehearsing and making individual players play incredibly challenging parts until the, until the player broke. Not a nice man. And the, my teacher, had, Andrew Solomon, a lovely man, a fine teacher and a great player, had nothing good to say about him, which is strange because he was a very, <laughs> Andrew was a lovely man. Anyway, this is so, you know, no matter his personality, uh, he did some very good recordings. This is one of them on Everest for Coffee Ever, Symphony Number no. 5. <clears throat> one of my favorite records. The Rhino Sound uh, doing some fantastic repertoire. Let's see what he does here. Well, he does an Isle of the Dead, which you should all know, which is a fantastic piece by Rachmaninoff in 5 8 time, and it's complicated and magnificent and brooding. He does the best Rhapsody of Spaniel by Ravel, the orchestra. <laughs> How Mr. Uh, Cold Hearted Rhino gets that sound out of that orchestra just shows you. Uh, the power of conducting and what a great conductor can do. And the Pavan is very good too, but the Rhapsody Espanol is spectacular and the Isle of the Dead, well, and the recording of that, you won't hear better. That's a, that's a must record for your collection, LSE 2183. That's a, that's a, um, uh, Adlock Productions reissue. Easily the best Firebird ever recorded. Um, None come close to this. Every time I put it on, it's one of my test records, site two, so I can hear all the great LSO players and their unique sounds, including um, Barry Tuckwell on French horn, Gervais de Paya on clarinet, and all the other great stars. 
but it's Dorati, you know, he's, you know, he, I saw him play, uh, conduct in the, in London in the Royal Albert Hall many, many years ago, Beethoven 7 with the Royal Philharmonic. It was okay. And he had a lot of problems with some of the orchestras in his later life, very grumpy and um, walks off and well, a bit in a big huff, the whole deal. But man, did he do some incredible recordings. And this is one of them. You'll never hear the, the the Firebird played like this. It's it's absolutely spectacular. I don't know what happened. It's a Kingsway. The recording is fantastic. I think they just put the light on and said, okay, let's have a go. It's it's so exciting. The playing is so virtuosic. It's not Dennis Wick on trombone. You won't believe it. It's spectacular. Anyway, that's the one to get. Beautifully interpreted, playing and recording to die for. One of my top 10 greatest recordings ever. That's a, it's a Mercury original. Um, and this is the uh, Analog Productions reissue. <clears throat> Everyone needs a Bartok Concerto for Orchestra. Play to the Hilt by the Chicago Symphony and Reiner, who knew Bartok well, as I mentioned. Uh, Living Stereo, this is a superb reissue, 34. You all need that record. Another one of some lighter music, music from Carmen, very beautiful. And uh, Gruno's Faust, superb. This is the uh, Royal Opera House Orchestra with Alexander Gibson. It's a very famous record. LSC, what is it? Uh, where are we? Oh, there it is, 24, 2449. This is a reissue. Everyone needs that in their collection. The playing is wonderful. The music is wonderful, but the recording, boy, oh boy, that's pretty special. This is one of those very special Los Angeles Philharmonic Decker records that's a reissue with some various integral and ionization of wonderful, lots of percussion, but I bought it for the Arcana, which is, I've never played it. I think the, the LA Phil kind of put this together over about 150 takes is what the story was. It's so difficult. It's difficult to conduct. It's difficult to play. I don't know what happened because the ed, the uh, the uh, engineers they they managed to get a really beautiful performance out of it. The recording is literally spectacular. Listen to the first five minutes. Turn it up and sit back and just listen to how a great orchestra sounds on a on a great LP. But that should be in your collection. Arcana is a great piece, fun and quite challenging. You all know this was going to be in the collection. This is the best pictures in the exhibition ever recorded by Fritz Reiner at Chicago Symphony with Adolf Herseth and the brass section sounding just spectacular on this recording. Beautifully played, beautifully interpreted, and the recording is spectacular. Listen to Nomus, do one of my little tests here. Listen to Nomus um, after the first big whack and you hear the horns very quietly in the back of the hall stopped. That means the fist is in the, in the bell. And uh, it's a, you get a pretty gnarly sound. Well, the second horn misses it and wobbles. Now, Reiner never even heard it on the tape because he wouldn't, because it's, it's so far back in the mix. But this recording, you'll hear it clearly. I always listen out for that on when I'm testing cartridges and turntables, etc. speakers. So listen out for that. But this, just, you know, or just enjoy it for the great recording that it is. Putting on a broken record here. Well, actually, <laughs> no pun intended. This is another Reiner Chicago Symphony. This is uh, Kijé, which is what everyone listens to the opening of Piccolo and the flute, and then, of course, the percussion, the bass drum, and the horns playing pianissimo. It's incredibly effective music and beautifully played, beautifully recorded. But the Stravinsky Song of the Nightingale, which always gets second billing here, first of all, it's a 10 times harder piece to play and 10 times harder to conduct than, than Kijé, which kind of plays itself. Very challenging, and it's never been played better. There's no nothing even comes close to this recording of Song of the Nightingale. Superb recording. You all need that in your collection. Another great analog productions test record, but also uh, for the music. This is Shostakovich Symphony Number no. One and the Age of Gold Ballet Suite with the London Symphony and Jean Martineau. As I mentioned, a very underrated conductor. Stereo, of course, is famous 2322. This is a Kingsway production. And for those of you who would like to do test records, uh, the, the beginning of the symphony number one, maybe about 32 bars in, you'll hear the Kingsway uh, rumble of the tube between Aldwych and Hoban on the Piccadilly line in London, rumbling away underneath the, uh, the string bases. 
It's it's pretty effective. But I, the the piece of music. I mean, think about this. Shostakovich wrote this as his graduation piece from the St. Petersburg Conservatory way back when, when he was seventeen. To have a a, a musical language, a di- uh, his um, his form and his style so defined at seventeen is remarkable. It's a spectacular piece of music, and this there's no better recording. Listen to the beginning, um, the trumpet playing. I think the gentleman's name was Swift, George Swift, I think, but I, I've never heard like uh, staccatos like it. It's superb. Anyway, that's a great one. And finally, from the reissues, orchestral <clears throat> is uh, this Mercury Living Presence reissue with uh, the great Paul Perret and the Detroit Symphony at their very, very best. Uh, another Ebert, Ports of Call, you can do without that. I can, maybe you can't. But we bought, buy it for the Ravel. The, the, the Rhapsody Espanol is superb, but bettered by Reiner. Laval's Pavan and Alvarado. The Alvarado is incredibly well played and you think that's the Detroit Symphony really they had a great orchestra and then of course in different guises it's it's a little bit like the Royal Philharmonic comes and goes it's back on now so that's great so they're sounding great but anyway the Detroit Symphony in those days with Paul Perret fantastic recording SR90313 we'll continue on now with some chamber music and solo works and uh, concertos this is the Deutsche Grammophone uh, reissue, uh, Dvorak, uh, string quintet in G major, played by the magnificent Boston Symphony chamber players, all the solo people from the Boston Symphony, and this, I think, it was recorded in the 70s, maybe early 80s, and uh, you're not going to get any better. The, the orchestral play, excuse me, the solo playing and the ensemble is fantastic. Uh, basically, anything you see with the Boston Symphony chamber players is, is, is gold and pretty well definitive. So that's a, that's a wonderful work. The music is beautiful, played beautifully. Everybody needs a Debussy and Ravel string quartet coupling. This is as good as any on Philips. Very inexpensive, very widely available. This is with the Quartetto Italiano. I think it was recorded in the 70s or the 80s. And it's just absolutely beautiful. The music is gorgeous and uh, the playing is fantastic. And again, imported from Europe, so it must be good. Some of my favorite string quartets here. Uh, you can't go wrong with this quartet in the early days. Uh, there was quite a few changes later on. <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot of Canadian violinists took over as principal violin, first violin. But in their early days, you couldn't really beat the Tokyo String Quartet. Just outstanding ensemble, beautiful tone. And here playing the Prussian string quartets by Haydn. Uh, widely available. This was cost me like $2 on a record show. Really fantastic. Another one is, uh, this is Schubert with Alfred Brendel uh, on Philips. Again, imported from Europe. Uh, he's, he's got the whole cycle of Schubert uh, and any of them with Mr. Brendel playing uh, is, is worth your time. He's a fantastic artist, and uh, his Schubert is just exquisite. All of his central repertoire, uh, Schumann and Beethoven, uh, fantastic. But definitely his Schubert. And again, these are widely available. I picked nearly all of them up at a record show here in Victoria. And, uh, you know, two or three bucks each. They're pristine vinyl. Really worth looking for Alfred Brendel and Schubert. This is an original living stereo. This is the, the best, I think, Chopin Ballades with the great Rubenstein. When you put Rubenstein and Chopin together, it's magic. And the Ballades, some of his most beautiful music. You don't, you're not going to get any better than this as far as the playing is concerned. And the recording is very good too. 2370, not the best living stereo, but very, very good. But as far as Chopin Ballades are concerned, or the Nocturnes, just get Rubenstein. You can't go wrong. This is an interesting record for those of you who like harpsichord. And, you know, many people do from some of the, the letters I get at Audio Freely. A lot of people love harpsichord. This is my old friend, Valda Aveling. She was a, a mentor and teacher of mine at Trinity College of Music. And she here on an EMI. She plays Scarlatti. The most wonderful lady, Australian. Wonderful coach, mentor. 
a fantastic harpsichordist. Um, and um, this is a, a, an audiophile um, <laughs> harpsichord record, if you will, playing the beautiful Scarlatti sonatas. And you can see Volda sitting in her house in, uh, in little, I think they call it Little Italy, little, excuse me, Little Venice in London, near the, near the London Zoo in Regent's Park. She had the most lovely home. And uh, we used to go over there and have dinners and, and talk music, and she used to coach me on Bach. But anyway, we've all that. But that's, if you can find it, it's pretty, pretty available. You're not going to get a better harpsichord sounding record, Volder. Here's a great kept Canadian secret. We have one of the world's greatest uh, players of the central repertoire, much like uh, Alfred Brendel. This is a, he's Austrian born, but lived in Canada for many years, still alive. Anton Querty. Unfortunately, he had a very bad stroke, and he's still recovering from that stroke, unfortunately, but he's, so he's not playing. But, oh my God, he's a fantastic artist. Any of the central repertoire, Beethoven, Schubert, Schumann, you can uh, get these records. They, they're, you know, probably a dollar, two dollars. Um, worth getting. Anton Querty. Everyone needs a trout quintet. And this is a reissue, a Decca reissue. This is the uh, famous uh, Vienna Octet. Basically, the Vienna Philharmonic players with Sir Clifford Curzon. That's one of my test records as far as like um, tone is concerned and timbre uh, between the piano and the, they're very interesting string bass player. Plays sharp a lot of the time for some reason. Doesn't really affect the music that badly, but it's he, it's it's kind of more not so much sharp, but a kind of a whiny double bass, and it's really great to test your cartridge because uh, you can really hear the difference in the in the timbres between the players. And they have all have very unique Vienna sounds. So very worth getting. That's a reissue. The recording is second to none. There it is. It's another one of my uh, friends and mentors and teachers from Trinity College of Music in London. The great John Bingham playing Schubert songs arranged by Liszt. This is on Meridian. It's pretty available. Uh, it's such exquisite piano playing. And such a beautiful recording that everybody who loves great piano playing should try and get uh, this in your um, in your in your collection. John was a very interesting man. He was a fantastic teacher, a fantastic player. He actually um, went over and studied studied in Moscow um, with um, I'm trying to remember the, one of the famous uh, teachers there. And uh, when John Lill, another John, British John, uh, won the Moscow competition. I think he tied it with uh, Ashkenazi. Anyway, uh, John Bingham, instead of leaving uh, Moscow, stayed on for another three or four years to study, and it shows in his playing. Just an exquisite artist, John Bingham, and a lovely, lovely man. This is another one of those very special Boston Symphony Chamber players playing music by Debussy. You get the great Dorio Anthony Dwyer playing Syrinx which is a lot harder than it sounds. <laughs> uh, the cello sonata, the violin sonata played beautifully by the soloists, but the sonata for flute, viola, and harp by Debussy is just an exquisite piece of music. Very difficult. And these guys make it sound easy, but it's so musical. Great recording too. Another one of those, these Decca reissues. <clears throat> this time the Schubert uh, octet in F major played by the Vienna Octet, which is basically the same people, all the people from the Vienna Philharmonic. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, very idiomatic playing, superb recording. If you need a, a Vienna Octet, and you all do, this is very, very good. A concerto here now, one of our favorites. This is Sibelius, the violin concerto, the great violin concerto played by Ida Hendel. Um, uh, kind of a, I'm not sure where Ida was from, but uh, she lived a long time in Montreal, my old hometown. And uh, this is, again, with the Bournemouth Symphony. We talked about them earlier with the, uh, the Shostakovich 7. Again, with Pavo Berglund, who was fantastic um, with Sibelius. And uh, she's incredible in this, Ida Hendel. And it's an EMI, and it's a really famous EMI. It's not so readily available, it's not been reissued, uh, it's hard to get and could be quite expensive, but it's worth looking for. If you, if you need a great Sibelius concerto, this is one. This is a very interesting record. Uh, I'll tell you a little story about it. Uh, first of all, it's got you know fantastic 
performances by Rostropovich of the Dvorak Cello Concerto. And I always listen to the Tchaikovsky Rococo variations, which are very beautiful. And at the beginning of the uh, Rococo variations, um, you get some interesting horn playing. And as my equipment has got better, I can hear more and more into the horn, into his articulation. It's Gerd Seifert, the principal horn, in those days of the Berlin film. It's very interesting to listen to. Uh, uh, wonderful performances. Rostropovich, you're not going to get any better. That's a beautiful record. Another interesting record. This is uh, Julian Breen, the great guitarist. You either get Julian Breen or John Williams, and you're guaranteed pretty well uh, spectacular uh, guitar records. Now you think, oh wow, uh, Rodrigo, Concierto de Aranwath, however you, uh, you pronounce it. And of course, it's one of the most famous pieces of music ever written, and it's a, certainly a wonderful performance by Julian Bream. The Monteverdi Orchestra, this is with John Elliott Gardner when he was very young. And, uh, but what's interesting is, is Lennox, the Lennox Barclay Guitar Concerto. Lennox Barclay gave me my, uh, my uh, fellowship at Trinity when I was there uh, many years ago, and he's a fine composer, but his guitar concerto, the first recording, is really wonderful. And you'll really enjoy the Rodrigo, but I think you'll really en en enjoy the Barclay Guitar Concerto. Superb piece of music. This is a world famous record. I bought it, uh, <clears throat> I think I bought it from um, uh, Discogs. It cost me quite a bit of money. This is Natania de Vrath uh, with an orchestra. It's a pickup orchestra of Vienna players. I did some research. Um, and it's the Songs of the Auvergne, arranged by Cantalube sung in the Auvergne dialect, a very unique record, beautiful. Everyone knows the Bayero, you'll, you'll recognize it right away. Used it in lots of commercials, but it's a gorgeous record. But that's, that's on um, Vanguard, yeah, Vanguard, Stereo Lab is the number. Everyone needs that in their collection. Another one, another Decca reissue. This is a wonderful emperor concerto by Beethoven, the fifth piano concerto, with Sir Clifford Curzon and the Vienna Philharmonic, conducted by Hans Knappertbusch, who I think is an underrated conductor. This is very beautiful. The, the conducting, conducting this concerto is very difficult in the first movement because there's lots of pizzicato, which is hard to get together, and uh, lots of solo piano music, and the orchestra comes in kind of like, at, not at lib, but at a, at a later date after the piano player has been um, tinkling around a lot. It's not easy, and these guys make it sound simple. So that's a fantastic emperor consider if you can, if you can get it. It's, this is a, a reissue, so it's not too bad. Another reissue. This is um, the Beethoven Violin Concerto, another superb recording with Andre Cloyton conducting the French National Orchestra, which is is good. Sounds very good, but of course Oistrakh is just supreme in this repertoire. It's an EMI and it's a reissue, probably Testament. Beautiful recording, superb performance. Of course, you all have a Four Seasons, and this is one of the best on, on vinyl. This is an Argo, again, with the Academy of St. Miles in the Fields, basically guaranteed a, a home run, directed by Nero Mariner, with the wonderful Alan Loveday on violin. Uh, you can Google Alan Loveday and find out what happened to him. Uh, he's a fine, fine violinist, and um, uh, when you hear him play, you'll understand. Just exquisite playing, but uh, didn't do too many records. Anyway, that's a great one to get. I just found that in a, we just got that in a record, um, an estate uh, collection that they just gave us here in Victoria. So my nephew got that and he's very happy. He's a budding audiophile and has a record business. The Great Brahms Concerto with Heifetz and the Chicago Symphony. This is an analog productions reissue, 1903, LSE 1903. It's just, Heifetz ruined it because no one plays it better than Heifetz. It's the first movement especially is it's just absolutely exquisite. So that's, that's a must in your collection. This is an exceptional Tchaikovsky violin concerto played by Alfred Kempoli, who was very famous in England before and after the war. Played with the LSO with a 12 Argenta. This is an original London blue back. Mr. Campoli, as I used to call him, uh, was uh, a great player during the war and just afterwards. 
And I finally got to play with him, um, play, playing Bach, Spannenberg, Concerto Number no. 5, uh, around England on a tour, and he was 92 and still playing the hell out of the violin. Wonderful man, very high standards, did not suffer fools gladly, but the most amazing artist. That is a superb record. You won't hear the Tchaikovsky played better. And the, 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 orca the violin tone on this record is beautiful. Hard to find though. This is one of my gems. A lot of people know this record. This is an original, which cost me quite a bit of money on Discogs and EMI. But Michelangelo, it has been reissued. Uh, and it's got a beautiful G major, played by the, with the Philharmonia and uh, uh, Ettaro Grazis. The Michelangelo's uh, playing is exquisite, as everyone knows. But it's the rack four that I bought it for. Oh man, that's a beautiful performance. A very underrated piece. Everyone thinks about rack two or rack three. Rack 4 is fantastic as well, so that's a great one to get. If you can get it, it's not cheap. And I've, had a mo I've got the mono as well, it's good, but the, uh, the stereo is, if it's in good condition, this one is. It's absolutely beautiful. It's EMI, but his master's voice. And Michelangelo is a master. Here's an, a record of the, um, the uh, Elgar Violin Concerto, which is one of the top five violin concertos. Probably Elgar's greatest piece. Incredibly difficult to play. In beautiful, very beautiful. This is a pretty, you know, bland CBS recording of the London Philharmonic conducted by Baron Boyne, but with Pinky Zuckerman, Pinkhouse Zuckerman, playing the solo part and playing the living hell out of it. Uh, Pinky's sound is so beautiful, even the CBS recording can't wreck it. That if you're going to get an Elgar concerto, and you know, you should have one. This is uh, the one to get, I think. Exquisite playing by Pinky. And finally, into some box sets of some chamber music, the late quartets by Beethoven. Some people consider the greatest music ever written for any instrument in any genre. This is the on Phillips again, very inexpensive, easily available. This is an original from the Quartetto Italiano, certainly worthy of a reprint. But um, uh, you can find this pretty easily. But you're not going to get better than late quartets. Just beautifully played, beautifully recorded. At one time, I realized there was very lacking in chamber music. Uh, from um, on LP, so I, I found this on Discogs. It's massive and heavy, and all of Brahms' chamber music played by artists, you know, uh, who do a lot of stuff with uh, George Crown Phone. It's very, very consistent, beautifully played, beautiful recordings. Get it specially for the clarinet quintet with Carl Leister from the Berlin Phil. It's and the Amadeus Quartet. It's wonderful, and finally. Long haul. Thanks for sticking around. This is uh, a pretty recent uh, box set. Uh, Martha Argerich and Claudio Bardo, the complete concerto recordings uh, on George Cramphone. It's a reissue. It's a very lovely set. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff in it, including uh, what have I got here? Prokofiev, Ravel, Chopin, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, Mozart, and, Ravel, and more Ravel, and, and some bonuses. But it's wonderful. It's uh, well recorded and typical, incredibly musical playing by Martha Igerich, technically flawless and beautifully accompanied by Claudio Abada with various orchestras, I think Vienna, Berlin and London. That's it. It's 100, actually, I think it's 101 records that you should have in your collection. If you get a chance, I think you, I can you know, personally recommend them as great performances and anywhere from good recordings to, uh, right up to high quality audio file recordings. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks for watching. It's a long video and uh, we'll see you in the next video.